Um, let's go over the first part, guys. And the, basically what I'd like to do in this one is give you like an introduction um, to basically some uh, imaginary numbers. So what we're simply going to do, guys, is I just want to kind of review what we have talked about um, previously, in the, previously in other classes as far as simplifying you know, square roots or even cube roots. Um, when we're looking at this, guys, if we're taking the cube root of a number, basically remember the cube root states you know, what number multiplied by itself three times three times is going to give you 64. Well, if you guys think about that, you can say 4 times 4 times 4 is going to give you 64. So the simplified answer of the cube root of 64 is just simply 4. When we look at the negative cube root, um, that's going to be what number is going to multiply 3 times to give you negative 64, which again would actually be negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. So when we have a uh, cube root, we can, t we can either be a positive or a negative number. It really just kind of depends. And it doesn't matter if it's 3, 5, or anything else. If it's odd, you can take the odd root of a positive or a negative number. However, on square roots, we can't really get that far. If I say what number multiplied by itself, which is the square root here, what number multiplied by itself gives you 64, we could say that answer is 8. However, we come into a problem when we want to do the square root of negative 64 because um, you can't multiply the number by itself to give you positive or negative 64. Because positive 8 times positive 8 is positive 64. Negative 8 times negative 8 is still positive 64. So unfortunately, we cannot take the square root or any even root of a negative number. However, what we can do is we can rewrite this using a different number system. So so far in the class, you guys have only been dealt with the real number system. So what we're going to do is introduce the imaginary unit, imaginary number system. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to break up the problem into 64 times negative 1. Does everybody agree with me that 64 times negative 1 is the same thing as negative 64? No? You don't agree with me? OK. So by breaking that up, though, what that allows us to do is to utilize the definition of our imaginary unit. So now I can, take, I can break this up into the square root of 64 times the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of six, positive 64, four, we already know that's 8. And then we need a definition for the square root of negative 1. So what we're going to use in this class and represent the square root of negative 1 is i. And you can think of i as like imaginary. That represents an imaginary unit because it's impossible to multiply a number by itself to get a negative number for an even root, right? So our number system is now going to include the imaginary unit, our imaginary number system. So this answer, simplified, could just be 8i. All right? Anybody make a little sense? OK. So what we're going